Uh, look, you've well, last we you've been on it. You've been on the Edinburgh podcast, and you we did a remote record yes. podcast. Where I mean, it's very sad now. I've got to the age where um, you know I feel like quite fatherly towards you, which is a very <laughs> big shame for me as a as a human being. It's good as a human being, but it also makes me feel sad for myself. <laughs> like, look at oh, little Lauren. Um, <laughs> You were going through quite a tough time uh, I was. back in 2020, 2021. Quite tough. So it yeah. was, I'd moved back temporarily to Newcastle, which became permanent quite quickly. My fella had broken up with me on April Fool's Day, which was not a prank, although I did think it was for arguably too long. <laughs> um, um, and then, yeah, obviously lost all the comedy. So I was working at Morrison's. And I remember being buzzing doing the one um, on, on Zoom with you. I was like, look, I've got a high vis. And I was just very excited to have any form of responsibility. And then I came <laughs> off the Zoom with you and the removal van had arrived. My ex had sent all my possessions back up in a van. And I came downstairs just to everything in the living room and me mom going, I'm checking everything to see if he's broke anything. And I was like, okay, <laughs> thanks. And the most petty thing was he'd sent back our shared calendar that was on the wall, which was full of plans that were no longer happening. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, that, thank you for sending me a reminder of all the work I have lost. <laughs> thank you. It would have been petty for him to take every other month. I yeah. think that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'd have done. Uh, I mean, he, he sounds like a dick, I have to say. I've heard you talking about, about this breakup, and it does sound, uh, unless you're really awful, which you don't seem to be. Uh, Probably no. depends how hungry I am. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but you know, it, but it's good that you've that it, if it wasn't going to work, it's good that it's, yeah. that it's over. And, Everything and, happens for a reason. That's I, what I think. It, I don't agree, but uh, it's, <laughs> in hindsight, it appears. It doesn't like have that. to be a good reason, <laughs> but everything does happen for a reason. Yeah, I mean, it's it's cruel to break up with a comedian on April Fool's Day. That is, I, I mean, it's our day as well. It's our and special the, day. And the Edinburgh Fringe had officially been cancelled that day as well. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know which I'm sad or about. <laughs> But, because yeah. you've been working towards that, you know, so you've you'd done some previews already for yeah, that Edinburgh. And then you I got took 2019 off, so I could, and I tried to get like ahead of the curve, and I started like writing the show at the end of 2019, started previewing it in like February. And I remember my agent being like, This is going to be such a big hit, like, this is going to catapult you back into people's attention. And I was like, Yeah, it is. And then it went in the bin two weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that backstage, just going suddenly about Edinburgh accommodation, which I don't think yeah. we, I booked, my, I booked my Edinburgh accommodation like, in about February, and the guy said, "Oh, you can if you pay up front, you can have like ten percent off." And then I woke up the next day and went, "Oh, I wonder if this COVID thing's gonna affect that." <laughs> did I make a mistake? Yeah, I did make a mistake. We didn't get, didn't get. I think he paid us back a hundred pounds a week for about three weeks, and you know that should be. You'd think that'd be the whole lot, wouldn't you? No, it was. <laughs> No, it was not. Uh, but there we go. So yeah, it was it was sad times. But if you, if you well, you're living in Newcastle. Yeah. So tell me what what's I mean you brought you brought up in Newcastle and living in Newcastle. I what? am Kenton girl, born yeah. and bred. Yeah. What? Why? Why would you want to uh, live here? <laughs> <laughs> And you could live in London. Why I would you? Why would you do love it? it, yeah. I absolutely love it. And that's the one thing that kind of makes me a bit sad about comedy. And I hoped COVID would change it. And I feel like it temporarily did, but I don't think it has in the long term. Is the pressure it puts on you to move to London. And I'm like, yeah. but why? Like, why? You're missing out on so many amazing voices and amazing talent with amazing stories who don't want to pay two grand a month to live in a cupboard with rats. Like, <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah, I what, love it here. Tell me what's great about Newcastle. The people, yeah. like, I just think, I think Glasgow, Liverpool and Newcastle are all very similar-minded people. Yeah. And they're like my three favourite places to gig as well. Although I did, when I did my tour show in Liverpool last year, I was running back to get the last train. And I could hear the girl in front of us going, well, I didn't enjoy it as much as our last show. And I was like, I'm behind you. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, oh, at least it's just a three-hour train to like cry about that on. Then the train was cancelled. It was a five-hour rail replacement bus. And I was like, at least I have my memories. Amazing. But yeah, I just think the people are different. Like, I think you're brought up with a really good sense of humour being from here. Like yeah. I remember my ex who was from London. Um, I took him to meet like my grandma. And I said, she's got like a wicked sense of humour. You'll love her. And he went to meet her. And I think it was around the time of her birthday. And she was cracking on. She must have been like 91, 92. And he was like, oh, so like, what are you doing with your DLC? And she was like, oh, nothing. All my friends are dead. And he looked... <laughs> he looked mortified. Like he didn't know how to react. And I laughed. And I was like, but that's... 
that's our sense of humour. And that's yeah. how it, and you could tell he was thinking, oh, I don't know if I can laugh at this. And then she just went, well, if I was a horse, they would have shot us by now. <laughs> and I was like, I love it. I love that sense of humour. Yeah. I just, I'm really, I feel really lucky to have been brought up here. And to have like this comedy club as well, The Stand, to start yeah. your career in is really nice. Because when I moved down to London and was doing the open mic scene there, I was like, if I'd started comedy here, I would have some form of mental disorder by now. Yeah. Like, it's just horrible. Whereas I feel like, yeah, people champion you as well. Yeah. Like, there's people who still come see me now. I don't know if anyone has been seeing this since I was 18. I'm 30 in a couple of months. Wow. And there's people who've been coming to see me since I was 18 and they back is and I just... I, it's a city that really gets behind its own people and I think that's so important. Yeah. So important. Well, my family are from Middlesbrough, which is kind of like a <laughs> shit, shitty Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> so I do, I and mean, I think you know. I wonder as well because it is a herring is a Viking name. I don't know if you know that. So like, and the, that the her herring only comes really from this region. Really? The, that's where the if you look at the map of the heat map of herrings, the heat map of where, herrings. where Yorkshire and hot North herrings Umberland, in your North area. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, I wonder because that's because Liverpool's got like you know, it's it's sort of not an English city, and I think Newcastle yeah. is sort of not an English city as well. Even if we're going back a long way, I mean, Liverpool's are more of an Irish city. Yeah. But I wonder if the Viking thing is something to do. Well, with... I remember back in the day, Viggo Venn before yeah. Britain's Got Talent came and did a preview with me in Newcastle, and obviously he's Norwegian, and he was like, "Oh, I love it here. It's so beautiful." I was like, "Thank you for pillaging us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much." <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe that, that Norwegian sense of humor. The high, well, you mentioned high vis jackets that you were excited about, so exactly there you go. It's just straight in there. I, know, I heard you talking about. I mean, the the Morrison's job was like, yeah. which you've not. Are you have you stopped doing oh, that? Oh yeah, you're, you're yeah. Right. <laughs> I've you're escaped Cowgate yeah. Morrison's once but, and for all. <laughs> But, that, I mean, that must have been... I mean, it sounds like it was great in a lot of ways for you, right? Because, yeah. I mean, you know, as, I'm not saying that COVID was a good thing, <laughs> but for you, it, it was, a, you know, I think artistically, for, for comedians, it was actually, for a lot of us, it was obviously a nervous time because we it was a break from working. Yeah. But also it was a break from the, the relentless pressure of trying to do the next thing. And I think it sounds like for you... It gave you a chance to kind of regroup. Yeah, again. and I think as well, I think this is another thing of being from Newcastle. I think I've got a very grafters mentality, but I don't think, oh, I've got a grafters mentality. That's literally just how I am. So when comedy went tits up on, what, April the 1st, when I literally watched my diary <laughs> empty, um, I remember just thinking, right, well, I have to get a job. Like, it wasn't even a thing. I didn't even, well, obviously I was sad, but to me, I'd lost my job. What do you do when you lose a job? You look for another one. And I talked about it in my show, comedians were like, you're so brave. <laughs> You're so brave. And I was like, no, I just don't have a trust fund. Like, it's not brave. Like, to me, it was just sensible. I was like, I have lost my job. I've had to move back into my parents for the first time in eight years. I'm sure they don't want me there forever. Like, I don't want to be there forever. I don't want to, like, feel in the way. I was like, so if I want to move out, I need to earn money. I need to get a job. And for me, it was just a very logical thing. And comedians were like, eee. <laughs> I just couldn't. I was like, I know, because you never have. Like. <laughs> but um, I just, I'd, obviously, I didn't want to work there forever. But you know what? Like, it kept us busy. It was like, it was people to chat to. Yeah. I got material out of it. Yeah, well, that's interesting. I heard you on Stuart Goldsmith's podcast. Yes. The way you were talking about, like, sitting at the till and having a piece of paper, a till yeah. bit written to, I used to, to write ideas. I out a blank then. till receipt and then just write like, yeah. like ideas down from, I probably had a queue halfway down the shop but you're like, <laughs> why is this lassie not serving? And I was like, I'm having a moment actually. <laughs> but it's interesting because I like in the old days, comedians, you know, would have, have, have done like a, a, a career often before yeah. they became comedians. And if you start, I know you, you were working in other jobs as well, but you start at 18, you know, so it's, it's actually to yeah. do something, to, do, to have to do an actual job and not be able to do any comedy. Exactly. It's, a, it's an amazing experience. And I think that really, you know, fires up your creative juices. Right? Yeah, it yeah. really does. And as well, I sometimes think you have to lose something to realise how much you... Because it always gets to a point in comedy as well, and I think I was at that point in, like, 2020, where I was like, do I really want to do this? Like, I love it, but I feel like I'm not getting the opportunities I want to get, and how much longer can you bang on the doors until your knuckles just fucking can't take it anymore? And then I got that job, and I just felt this fire in my belly. And the last time I'd had fire in the belly was 2017, when I wrote 
Lady Mock. Right. That was when I had fire in my belly because I remember I'd walked out of my day job in London because I cried for two hours on my break and couldn't stop crying <laughs> and couldn't work out how. I realise now it was a breakdown, <laughs> but I didn't know that then. <laughs> I was just like, why can't I stop crying? So I'd walked out of my day job. I had enough, that was in April. April's a weird month for me. Um, <laughs> God, I'm cursed. I, re- I had enough money to last us till Edinburgh. And I was like, right, I have to have a good Edinburgh and then I can maybe do stand-up full-time, like, properly. If not, I will have to get another job in September and move back to Newcastle, whatever. But I had all this fire in my belly because I was like, it has to work. Yeah. It ha- I have nothing to fall back on. Like, this has to work. And I think that's why that show ended up being so good because I just put everything in it. And I'd not felt that fire since. Obviously, I had passion for comedy, yeah. but I'd not had the fire. But, oh, during that year, I had so much fire in my belly. And I was like, the second I get a chance to get back on stage, I'm going to remind everybody exactly what I can do. <laughs> yeah. And they're going to regret not having this when they could have had this sort of thing. And, um, yeah, I think it went pretty well. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> 